Now over to our career starter, Ian Harv Harvey, to explain a bit more about how the session will run. Harvey, uh, Ian, over to you. Thank you, Grace. Um, kia ora, everybody. Uh, this is kind of interesting, isn't it, to be in this space? Uh, first of all, I am not an expert on this subject uh, at all, and uh, uh, so I am just going to facilitate. But I just wanted to give you some background about why I'm interested in this space. So we're a B Corp. Uh, we were accredited about three years ago. And the interesting thing being a company with B Corp, you become, it's made us a lot more conscious around uh, our actions and how we operate and, and what we procure and who from and so forth. And one of the interesting things is that I've been reflecting as an individual, I'm not as discerning uh, as I am, as an individual as I am at work. And I'm really interested in uh, this subject around how do we motivate people to be more conscious around how they spend their money, where they spend it. There's going to be a lot more money uh, being spent on consumables. And I think it's a great opportunity to raise that, uh, that topic. 80% of, of decision making are made by women. And the fabulous thing is that looking today, it looks around two thirds of the people on this call a woman. So um, uh, fabulous to have that ratio there. So a couple of questions that we sort of posed um, here. Um, and I think people underestimate just how when you collectively, how powerful consumers could be if they just raise that consciousness. So there's two or three questions here I want to put forward. And I thought with this uh, this session, we've got about uh, 36 people here of maybe breaking up into two or three rooms because what I, I, I'm not much of a fan of, of just um, talk fest. I'd love some practical ideas and thoughts about how do we raise this consciousness and, and to try and get people to think about the actions actually do matter as a consumer. So I've got three questions here, and then I'm going to open up to you guys here before we break out to see what we might be missing in the way we set this up. So as a conscious consumers, how can we influence others to do the same? So as a B Corp, I feel quite happy influencing other companies that we do business with. I'm less comfortable about influencing my friends to be more conscious. But I think there is an opportunity there. I might end up with less friends and I don't have a lot to start with anyway. But I think there is an opportunity for us to, to help raise that profile uh, in, in the people we deal with every day. Um, and then what do we need from suppliers? When we go and purchase goods, what do we need as a consumer? to make better decisions. And we had a great conversation earlier today uh, uh, in this planning session, is that when you are out uh, and about, whether it's a supermarket or so forth, you're pressured with time, you might be pressured with budget, uh, pressured with kids, whatever. How is it, how do we make it easier? And what signals do we have to get, give back to actually be more conscious and accurate consumers? And how do we encourage people to carve out time to actually think and to act more consciously? So the interesting thing is, uh, and you know, Deborah's put a, a, a thing that needs to be easy, and apparently it's not that easy. And as I said, I'm not a great consumer. So this is, as I said, I'm not the expert today. So what other questions are opening up to any of you here, spoken or written, what other questions are we lacking today before we break out? Over to you, go. Lo, you put your hand up. Yes, you did. I'll have, no, I was thinking. I'm all good, have. I'm just okay, here. To... I, haven't, I haven't seen that. You do that before, Lo. Well done. <laughs> 
So I'm really interested in what I've missed. What other questions could we pose? Tristan. Hi. Um, I wonder if there's a component around uh, influencing consumers not to buy things that perhaps uh, they, they don't need, that they could borrow otherwise, um, or are able to um, improve uh, or reuse what they already have in, in, in place of other purchases that they may make. Yep. Yep. So Sharma Bill just talked about, you know, in the last session, how much we haven't spent in the last month. You know, it's quite interesting what we don't spend on. Yep. Just looking at the chats Absolutely. down here. Yeah, lend and be, be, uh, borrow from others. Retail is putting better quality products in front of consumers to influence them. How do we know they're better quality? That's something I struggle with. And I struggle with how we go. Yep. Hi, Jer. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's like what you say about being a B Corp. It's being able to understand your supply chain. And when you speak to a procurement officer that you're able to talk about your supply chain, and what goes into the products and what makes them superior um, to other inferior products. Um, but it's actually them giving those particular companies a chance to have a leg up as opposed to buying inferior products from China. So I, I really think that retailers play a huge part in this because ultimately, I think people are sheep and they tend to be influenced by what's put in front of them. And if you put the better things in front of them, then they will be more influenced. So I think we look to our large um, retailers to, to really start to change their procurement policies. Christine. Um, I have a, a bigger question, which is around consumer behavior, um, that essentially, and what we're trying to ask of consumers, um, is going right up against everything that for decades, um, the big corporates have been trying to ask them to do, which is, to say to them, you need this stuff, you need the newest, you need the latest, um, buy, buy to keep up, buy to be successful. Um, and yeah, we have a, a deeply entrenched consumer behavior, which is to buy for something to do and as a way of keeping up. How do we lean into the fact that we're up against a massive marketing, advertising um, industry to sell more? Yeah, that's tough. Mm. Um, and picking up on that, Christine, there I think there's also the mindset that for you, you, for every dollar that you spend, you want to, consumers are wanting to buy a lot. So the cheap products at the moment, I think generally we're seeing it does that an ethical supply chain and. premium price. So there's also the equity lens here. What consumer segments are we talking about? Um, so I like some of the discussion coming out around shifting the onus um, from consumers onto the retailers and the bigger corporates. And Laura, I think we, I certainly um, missed out a little bit there in, in, the, in the middle, but um, we've got the drift. We're going to break out. We've got three rooms organised to break out. Just, um, I want to give you one example. We did it uh, work recently, and, and this, this is the sort of thing that spins my wheels. We've just bought some uh, face masks for, and I should have had them here, uh, for the staff. The cool thing was we were able to buy it through Little Yellow Bird that some of you know, so we know that ethically they're wonderful. Uh, and uh, inside it is some uh, wool from Wanaka. It's an organic wool. Uh, and they've made these face masks through a company called Lanico. Lanico. The fascinating thing up until now, all those masks were made in China and Taiwan. And now they've brought them back to New Zealand because we couldn't access those masks, which are some of the best in the world. So the wool can be washed and reused, by the filters, and then they can be composted afterwards. Uh, and then we can send those masks back to be unpacked from the circular economy with Little Yellow Bird. And it was such a wonderful feeling to actually make that purchase 
knowing that we weren't buggering up the planet by buying these things and we could use them several times. And it was just wonderful to have that, uh, have that feeling. Hugh. Uh, yes, can you hear me? I think so. Yes, perfect. So yeah, that uh, those face masks is a very good example of uh, a business taking negative externalities into account. Uh, negative just being meaning bad externalities, meaning things external to the production and consumption of that of that purchase. Hopefully, I'm not being too technical, and uh, if I am, please uh, wave at me or something. But negative externalities are very important within our our world. Um, a good example is if you buy petrol, then you're purchasing, uh, sorry, the consumer who purchases the petrol gets the advantage of it. The company that sells the petrol gets the profit of it, but the uh, everyone else who has to, you know, either suffer or pay for the additional pollution that it creates are absorbing the cost of the negative externalities. And when we're looking at the production and consumption, we really need a way for these businesses to absorb all of the negative externalities that they, that they create, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> and Hugh, I would, I, talking to this crowd here, they'd get it, the general, the general consumer, they would have switched off 10 minutes ago. <laughs> you know, so making it easy and accessible is uh, for people to understand is gonna be really important. Um, okay, so I'm just- can I, can I add to that? Um, so about the externalities and um, I, did, I did my master's research in ethical purchasing and I totally believe in ethical purchasing. And I've moved away from that position and we've seen it really play out in the last few weeks that um, a lot of production was done in, in the global south and now manufacturers have walked away from this supply chain, creating a massive humanitarian um, crisis over there. And now the UN is calling for manufacturers to step in and actually um, provide um, some certainty for those supply chains that have been abandoned. And what's becoming obvious is that the ethical purchasing is actually, is really opaque and really difficult for individuals to navigate. And what we need is policy, government policy to protect the world workers, not just in New Zealand, but globally. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, when it comes to dealing with uh, especially negative externalities. It's hard to leave it up to businesses in particular because uh, you know not all of them are as good, good as uh, Mr. Ian Harvey over there. Not all of them follow B Corp uh, guidelines. And if you leave it up to individual businesses, generally um, they're profit driven. So whatever externalities they can shift onto the consumer, well, not necessarily the consumer, sorry, onto society at large, increases their profit margin. So having government regulation, I think, is very important. Okay, just really mindful of our time. This is, this is really tight. So apparently we can break into three different breakout rooms. What I'm looking for is, what I'm looking for is, ideas of how we can help it make it easier for consumers, how we change the thinking, how we might change the models, the messaging. So I want something practical out of this that we can collate afterwards, please. Okay, and with the breakout rooms, we need one person to put their hand up to be a facilitator uh, to keep the discussion going. What I'd like is that Okay, why not one question per group from Deborah? Cool, we're happy with that? Cool, we're going with that. All right, one question per group. So uh, who's gonna put their hand up the facilitator? Lou, thank you. Lou's gonna facilitate and, well, because you were thinking again, what question do you want, Lou? You decide to have, that's all good. I'll write okay. it down. How can we influence others? Lo, that's your question, okay? So you're taking one group. Christine, thank you for, for, uh, uh, for putting your hand up. 
uh, Christine, your group is going to be it's constant consumers. What do we need from suppliers, producers to help us make better decisions? How can we influence business? Make them become B Corps, but I'm biased. Uh, and who was that? So somebody suggests that, that could be another facilitator. Uh, so there's a hand up here. Deborah. Sorry guys, I'm struggling to keep up here. Deborah. Uh, Deborah, well, if you want. Was okay. that how to influence business? Yep, so let's go with that. How do we influence business? All right. So I, I'm happy to facilitate that because that's the only thing I really sort of know about. Okay, so Dennis, you genius, three breakout rooms. We'll try and get Lou, Christine to go in different groups and me to go into different groups. Good luck. <laughs> 